Hey guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical, and today we are going to be discussing episode four of the Bone Tactical Survival Guide. We're going to be doing some survival training, and today's discussion is the rule of threes, okay? So episode one, if you didn't already check it out, was survival basics. Episode two was water. This coincides with my book and my survival guide that I've recently written. Uh, obviously tons of people have been asking for me to do videos on these topics and as well as selling the book separately by itself because the book normally comes with my bug out survival system that you see here, which we're out here in the wilderness actually using and training and uh, testing gear to be put into that bag. But we are kind of as well, we are going to be just really discussing the principles okay so i'm not uh i'm not going to be necessarily shoving anything down your throat as far as the bag itself goes really i enjoy being able to have this stuff on hand whenever i need it so you know i use the stuff that i sell and then selling it actually allows me to to be able to actually go out and test it and use it and do this kind of training and basically pays for itself i don't really I'm not out to make a killing and I don't make much money off of this, but I do have the ability to stock a bunch of cool survival gear and, uh, and, and, and basically get paid to go out and test it. So I do enjoy doing that, as you can tell, because, uh, you know, I'm writing survival books and I'm pretty into it. I obviously speak from my experience, having had to survive in these environments and many different non-permissive environments. The only reason I'm alive today to share these stories is because of the hardships I've gone through and probably the biggest reason that I write books and that I, you know, have a YouTube channel and develop products and, you know, make the world's most effective edge weapons and self-defense tools and non-permissive environment gear. The reason I do all this is so that other people can learn and from me, instead of having to go through the same hardships and instead of having to go and, you know, do the, you know, the stupid stuff or the, or, or survive the unsurvivable situations in order to learn these lessons. I hope that you guys can learn them uh, in a much easier fashion. But so, you know, like I said, this is uh, episode four, the rule of threes. Here we've got uh, the rule of threes. All right. This is, uh, this is my book that I'm using, you know, kind of here as a guide. Rule number one is you can survive three minutes without breathable air. And, you know, there's no gas mask in the bag. That's something definitely extra that you could throw in. I don't, I don't sell gas masks. I think it's all also, you know, gas masks or, you know, air filtration masks of any kind of mask is kind of something that's so different, I would say, that uh, something so specific to each person that it's kind of something you, if you do feel like you need it, that you want to prep it on your own. What are, what filter are you going to be using? Uh, I've got some Israeli masks, for example, that some of my friends sent me that, uh, that they used in the, you know, in the, in Israel and military, Israeli military guys. And I don't like the way that they work because of the, the canister kind of gets in the way of the way that I shoot and operate. So, which is interesting because it's a military gas mask, but you know, there's just all kinds of little you know, twerks and stuff. I prefer like a 3M mask, which, you know, no tactical guys are, are preaching to use 3M masks, but I, I, you know, so it's just kind of one of those things. Uh, that's, we're discussing the rule of threes. I don't feel the need to carry a mask necessarily, uh, every day, but I have masks and it's potentially, it's potential that I could use one. It, it, it's all according to where you're at. So this is the basics. I want to be able to sell this bag for an affordable price. My kit, my emergency kit, preparedness kit for an affordable price. And if I have a $300 gas mask in there or a $500 gas mask in there, then there's no way to be able to sell it for an affordable price. So I, I, I allow certain things to be things that you can prep on your own. And that's kind of why we're making these videos to help you in the decision-making process. Number two is shelter. I'll show you the, the shelter stuff that's in the bag here in a second, but I want to, I want to say your first line of defense, comment below if you think you know your first line of defense but your first line of defense is actually your clothing. So I've got a, a friend of mine here with me and he actually has the hot weather version of the Columbia combat shirt, just so you can see the difference. And I've got the, the extreme, extreme duty gear version. This, this particular version is a lighter material. It's a little bit of a different color and it's uh it's just, it's, it's better for direct sun exposure. 
Okay, but I'm here in right now in down in Central America where it's extremely hot and uh, and it's basically, you know, th it's not bothering me to have this this extreme weather gear. So it's it's not only for for cold weather uh, necessarily, it's it's for any kind of conditions. But if you if you're going to be out fishing or boating or in direct sunlight all day long, I would recommend the lighter version. But if you're going to be in, in, in jungle conditions or something like that, or you know, heavy cover, heavy foliage, or, or stuff going to be rubbing and bumping up against you, I would recommend having one of the heavier versions. So that being said, your first line of defense in shelter is your clothing. It's, it's your pants, it's your socks, it's, it's your boots. It's having a good set of boots like these. These are amazing waterproof loas, okay? waterproof and breathable you could have a, a good set of boots like these or you could have rubber boots right where you know and and both work great both are 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 great the the rubber boots are a lot more affordable um and if your feet are accustomed to rubber boots then you may be able to walk a long way in rubber boots but if your feet are not then you're going to want two pairs of socks you're going to want really comfortable broken in boots you're going to want uh you know pants that are good tough pants you're going to want Re mosquito repellent all kinds of stuff like that so these are all these are all things to consider but your first line of defense for shelter because rule number two is three hours subjected to extreme temperatures without shelter you don't want to be out in direct sun exposure extreme temperatures anything like that but it goes a lot further than that rule number two goes a lot further than that you don't want to be subjected to poison ivy you don't want to be subjected to thorn bushes you don't want to be subjected to there's so much stuff so it's uh, just so much that you can consider, guys, and really so much to think about. But rule number two is shelter. Uh, and part one of rule number two is your clothing and what you have on your person. So if you work in an office or something like that, well, another reason that there's a lot of extra room in this bag, I do recommend throwing in a uh, you know, broken in pair of boots, two pairs of socks. Uh, an, old, uh, an old trick is to wear dress socks under heavy socks like these wool socks. These smart wool socks are absolutely incredible. Uh, they don't really bother you even in extreme heat. And then if you're prone to getting blisters, wear a pair of dress socks under these socks and, and, and they'll kind of, they'll keep you from getting blisters. Then we've got blister plasters in the bag as well, right? So if you start feeling yourself getting blisters, then you can put that on. Um, you're pretty much going to be prone to getting blisters if you're going to be out in the out in the field doing work. I'll show you that earlier today. Actually, just just from working, I got a little blister. I felt the blister coming. I didn't put the blister plaster on because I'm hard headed, but I should have. And but I, I'll, I'm going to put one on now. I actually just used a wet wipe that's in the bag as well. One of the reasons I pack wet wipes is because this would have got infected if I didn't have something to disinfect it or clean it with. I also have a medical kit in there. All that stuff can be thought of as shelter. OK. There's a tent in there, which is a Mylar tube tent. You can be, use it like a blanket. So if it's very cold, it only takes a, a slight change in body temperature to get hypothermia and die. So that's so important that that's in there. Num rule number three is in the rule of threes is three days without drinking water is, is what they say that you can survive. Okay. They say you can survive three days without drinking water. Um, we did an entire episode on water that's already put up here on the channel. It was an earlier episode, so definitely check that out. But you do want to know where your water sources are. You want to have a, a good way to, to purify water, a good quick way that doesn't take a lot of calorie expenditure. That's why I pack my bug out bags that I use and sell with a water filter that's a, called a survival straw water filter, okay? Uh, another item of shelter, if I would have had these gloves on, instead of being trying to be a tough guy, then I would never got that blister. And this is a, this is a shelter item. This would have sheltered my hands from getting a blister. Okay. This is what I consider to be the main shelter item. This, this is a Mylar tube tent. Really cool because I literally can, if I happen to get in this water and I'm out here in the mountains and it's crazy hot in the rainforest, but cloud forests slash rainforest central america crazy hot in the daytime crazy humid but at night around nine o'clock it's temperature starts dropping by midnight it's cold and if you are wet you can die from hypothermia in this tropical environment all you would have to do is wrap this around yourself just just jump in it and lay there until the sun comes up and you'll 
prevent yourself from dying. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's really that easy, but it's not if you don't have that. So we talked about, you know, the wet wipes. We talked about a lot of stuff that, that all that other stuff that's in here. The final thing in the rule of threes is that you can survive three weeks without food. Okay. So that's, they say all of this stuff, you know, you don't want to go three days without water because you're going to be on day two without water. You're already going to be so dehydrated that you're going to feel like crap. Your performance is going to be down the drain. It's just everything you, you, you do, everything you do is going to, is going to, you're going to just be, your, your performance is going to be shot. You're going to be, you know, tired and you're not going to be able to think straight. So in a survival situation, you're going to be making poor decisions that could cost you your, your life. So you definitely want to be drinking water, staying hydrated, uh, metal water bottle like this one is extremely important. In fact, I'm out here, you know, having to remind myself as well, because I'm out here doing these, this survival training and making these videos and we're running and gunning and, uh, not, you know, trying to get as much done as possible in my extremely busy schedule. So I got to remind myself, keep drinking water, keep drinking water, you know, make sure you, I'm making sure I'm purifying the water with my water filter survival straw. So, you know, it's that easy. I can, I find an old three liter bottle, two liter bottle, one liter bottle, you know, there's trash everywhere. I can connect it to the survival, fill up river water, connect it to the survival straw and then squirt it into this bottle and have purified water ready to go. The final thing like we talked about was food. So really the resounding theme here in survival is being able to do it without a big calorie expenditure, whatever you're doing. If it's eating, you want to be able to eat without having to necessarily hunt. Okay. The eat, you want it easy as possible because that's what survival is about. Not wasting more calories than you're, than you're gaining in your food. So and also being on the move. You never know why you're going to be in a survival situation. If you're if you're running from something or someone or if you're, you know, escaping and evading, then you want something you can rip open and eat. You want something in the manner of, you know, being a survival bag. I tell people just, you know, throw one of these in every one of your vehicles. Why is that? Well, this expires in like 40 years. It's still good to eat for pretty much for forever. I got I the some German special operations guys put me onto these and uh, I actually get them directly from their source. So I get these directly from the source where they're made. And uh, and they're still, they're even in German. I didn't even, you know, change the, I told them, I contacted them. I said, hey, these, you know, I spent some time in Germany, you know, got to know a few special operations guys over there. And and they told me, you know, I, I noticed that they were, they had this awesome new uh, product here that you literally, it's it lasts forever. It's got everything you need in there, a bunch of calories. So if I'm in a survival situation like this, I got, I can break this easily into four pieces, eight pieces. And then I can, if I really had to, I could eat one, you know, every two days, a little piece every two days and, and, you know, survive months, right. You know, uh, uh, off of extra sustenance. And then you also want to be able to, you know, read, uh, foliage and, uh, flora and fauna so you can hunt as well. But the foliage, you want to be able to know what's edible, what's not. There's a lot of tests, uh, to know what's, to, you know, how to tell what you can eat and what you can't. I'll give you a, a quick tip as I close out this video with how to know what plants you can eat. You can literally just, you know, walk down and, and grab something. Obviously, the first thing you want to do is look at what possibly looks edible, you know, steer more towards something like fruit or something like that. But the first thing you do is rub, you know, break a leaf or break it open, rub a little bit on your skin, wait a couple hours. Okay. If, if there's no allergic reaction, then from there, you can rub a little bit on your lips, all right? Wait a couple hours, at least a couple hours, all right? I would wait till the next day. If there's no allergic reaction, eat a little piece of it. Wait till the next day. If you've eaten a little piece of it, okay, and a day has gone by and it didn't bother you, then you can slowly start eating it. You still need to worry about diarrhea and things like that, but definitely I would look for fruits. I would look for uh, roots and, and, and tubers. I would look for definitely things like that. Anything that you could, uh, you know, potentially mushrooms, some, some sorts of funguses. I try to stay away from fungus, but there are as well. It's all about in, in the end of the day, knowing your area of operation and knowing what's around you. And, uh, really, you know, you can get a jump on survival by knowing what edible plants exist in your area of operation.